Hi, now that we have a working installation of Node-RED on the Raspberry Pi, let's start doing some little exercises and become introduced to nodes and flows. In this lecture, I'm going to show you some of the most important uh, nodes, have a look at the properties, how to configure them, how to install uh, third-party nodes as well, and a few other bits and pieces that will make it easier in the next lecture to assemble a first simple flow. So on the left toolbar, you can see the a list of default or built-in nodes that come with a fresh installation of Node-RED. We can expand on those and install, as I said earlier, third-party nodes as well. I'm going to show you how to do that as well in this lecture. So let's pick a very common uh, node called Debug and just drag and drop it onto the Flow canvas. So this is the debug uh, node. Its job is to output text or pretty much numbers or any other output into the debug window that can appear on the right toolbar right here. Each node, of course, has got its own responsibilities. Now, all nodes, when you double click on them, reveal the edit pane. And uh, depending on what kind of node it is, uh, the properties tab here is going to have its own configuration and set of widgets that you can interact with and basically set up the node. In this case, the debug node allow us to add print out into the debug window right here on the right toolbar information that is coming into it from previous nodes in the same flow. And we can configure exactly what it is that we want the debug node to output and be using a lot of this specific node later on. And we can also control where we'd like the information to appear. In most cases, you want to send it out to the debug console. But for example, you may want to also send messages out to the system console, which is particularly useful if you are running node red on the command line. In our case, we are running it as a system service, so it does make sense to use a system console for output. We can always customize the name of a node. So in this case, I'm going to say that this is an example debug node and hit done. And you can see that the name appears here. So you should always really customize the name of your nodes to make it easy to see what they are in your flow. Just consider that a node is similar to a function in a traditional program and every function needs to have a reasonable name to be able to see what it does without having to go through all of the details or the code inside the function itself. So always have a uh, reasonable name here. Another thing that is available to you uh, within the web browser interface of Node-RED is information about the node. So especially as you are starting on the right side, on the right toolbar, click on the I button here and that depending on the node that you've selected, you'll get information about uh, the node as well as documentation. So the book icon here gives you documentation. So you can read out and understand what a particular node does. Let's bring another one. Let's say the inject node. Okay, as so you can see, I'm selecting the inject node and I can get information about what it does from the documentation directly. So I don't have to browse into the actual uh, documentation of website of Node-RED. It all comes with it when you install it on your Raspberry Pi. Again, you've got access to the I button for additional information, and you can see the various properties of this particular node. If I go for the example debug node, and the properties that I get for this node, again, depend on the node. Now, and let's see, another interesting thing from the info tab is the lineage, I guess, of all the, the hierarchy of nodes and the flows into which they belong to. So I've got a single flow tab. You can see its name is flow one, which is the same name that appears up here in the actual tab. And this flow contains these two nodes. I can enable and disable those nodes. It's like commenting out code in a traditional program. You can just click on this little radio button here to enable it and disable it. You can see that uh, the 
node graphical um, widget adjusts to indicate whether it's on or off, enabled or disabled. You can also trigger it manually from here. Of course, in this case, it doesn't make any sense because I haven't configured these nodes to do anything useful, but you can trigger them if you want to. I'm going to show you some examples in later lectures on uh, how to do that and why it's useful. Now, another thing I want to show you is this uh, burger menu, I guess are called here. You expand it by clicking on the three lines. And there is a particularly interesting option here called Manage Palette. When you go into Manage Palette, you go into this menu here, which allows you to install third party flows, nodes or collection of nodes. So one particularly useful collection of nodes that I will be using a lot in this project is the dashboard. So you can simply search for something that you're interested. You can see there's a lot of modules available, but let's say we are interested in some kind of dashboard and there's a lot of different options here contributed by uh, node red developers. I'd go for this one here, which is very well developed and contains an um, uh, excellent collection of uh, nodes that allow you to create dashboards. So installing this is as simple as clicking on the install button. Just click on that, say install. You can get more information, of course, if you want. And a few seconds later, or maybe about a minute, you've got a bunch of new nodes installed in your Raspberry Pi. Apart from that, I also want to install a couple of others. So for example, if you want to have a DH2 sensor attached to your Raspberry Pi, as I'm going to do a little later, you can interact with the DH22 sensor directly from within Node Red. And there is a node for that. It's the uh, Note Red Contrib DHT sensor. I'm just going to install that as well. And there's the new node as well. There's a few other uh, nodes and node collections that I'd like to use in this project and I'm going to show you and talk about those later when the time comes. But for now, I uh, just wanted to show you how to install a new node or collection of nodes so you can experiment with them. Now, if you go back to the nodes tab, you'll see all the nodes and node collections that are currently installed in your node red installation. So we can close this window and then Scroll down the left toolbar to have a look at the new items in the list. So here's the dashboard. So for example, let's go for a switch, right? So here's a switch node, double click on it. You can set it into a new UI or user interface group. You can create as many as you want. You can label it. It's a tool tip for additional help and so on. So every a dashboard node has got its own set of properties. Don't worry about exactly what each of those properties does. I'm going to show you and explain what you need to know for the purposes of this project later on in this section. I'm going to demonstrate how to create a simple dashboard. And also here's the Raspberry Pi DH22 node, which I also manually installed a bit earlier and you can see what it looks like. It's pretty self-explanatory about um, how to configure it. All you need is the data pin for the DHE22 and you're good to go. Another interesting and useful feature here is the settings option or the settings pane. Just select that and then you can use it to basically configure your working area, uh, the language, uh, the grid, nodes, etc. And here's the palette again, accessible also from this location from the user settings and shortcuts for your keyboard and so on. So all very useful stuff. Uh, before we move on, another thing that I want to point out is that after installing the dashboard collection of nodes, another item appeared here 
in the right toolbar, which is the dashboard. So this is a central place where you can create new tabs, new collections of dashboard widgets. And uh, again, this is something that I'm going to explore further in dedicated lectures later on. For now, that's all uh, I wanted to say about nodes. In order to make nodes do something useful, we need to connect them together uh, like this and therefore create flows. Let's move on to the next lecture where I'm going to show you a few simple node configurations into flows, a few simple things that you can do with them.